Hi guys, welcome back to Too Cool for Middle School. My name is Megan Forbes and I teach middle school history and English in Southern California. Today's video is this year's version of one that I've been doing for a long time. I find it really helpful to just see the overall pacing of how somebody taught their year, like how much time did you spend on this? How did you introduce this? And then what did you go to after that? And it's not like you have to copy things exactly. You can make adjustments for what works in your class. But for me, it's just really helpful to like just see an overview. Like I just want to know like, okay, how did, how did you do things? This year was the first year that I taught seventh grade English. I've taught sixth grade English, eighth grade English. For some reason, I just never had seventh until now. So the textbook was kind of new to me. I just didn't know like the stories in it. We used the textbook a little bit. I had some other units that we did. So I'm just gonna show you what we did for this year while I was there. Um, I was pregnant when the year started and then I taught through January. And then in February, I went out on maternity leave for the rest of the year. So this video will just be August through January, basically. Um, I have lots of other videos like this. If you teach sixth grade history or eighth grade history or sixth or eighth grade English, <laughs> I have lots of videos like this um, from past years that you can also find on my channel. And then I also go into more depth about different ways that I teach some of these English units in other videos on my channel. I think I have less from this seventh grade English stuff since this was new to me, but I have quite a bit for like eighth and sixth. Like I go into really, like I really go into depth, um, especially for like eighth grade English. If you use the collections curriculum, I have a lot of videos on that. So all that's here. Um, I'm gonna link as much as I can down below. And in just a second, I'm gonna show you my daily slides. And as I'm looking at those, I will show them to you so that we can look at what I was teaching. So if you haven't heard of using daily slides just as like announcements and a little record to keep track of what you taught every day and maybe what's due or what's coming up or reminders, they are my favorite thing. I live and die by my Google slides, my daily slides. I like to make lots of different like versions of them, like different designs and stuff. So I have a lot of those in my Teachers Pay Teacher store if you wanna use any of them. They just hold like the basic information, like this is what we're doing today, this is what's due, um, here are links that we used on that day. So if somebody forgets if we have homework, they check the slides. If they were absent, they check the slides. Everything is housed there for the entire school year, which is really nice. You can just like scroll back and see everything we did. It's actually really nice for me, like going into next year, to look at these slides and kind of see what we did and see if I want to adjust things. So I highly recommend having daily slides in addition, you know, to all the other slides, presentations, and everything else that you use in your class. Like this is just a great way to get started. So I'm going to show these to you as I look at mine. We started the year with my boba slides. I love these ones. <laughs> Um, we started on a Thursday, as you can see, and we did a pretty typical, like nothing super like engaging with like stations or circles or anything like that. Back to school lessons because this was the first time that everybody was coming back after being virtual for quite a while. And it was just like, I didn't really want to take any type of risks at the beginning of the year. It was, it was weird. It was a weird beginning of the year, you know? So we did that for the first couple days. Um, once we got to Monday, um, each day that week, I just did like a first chapter Monday, first chapter Tuesday, first chapter Wednesday type of a thing, um, just to introduce them to some books that I had in my classroom and introduce them to different genres and just try to get kids reading right from the get go. And I'll talk about a couple of ways that um, I try to try to hold them accountable for that, try to encourage them to like track their reading. Just like in my last video, you're gonna hear a little bit of crying in the background <laughs> from my little baby. My husband is watching her, but she's <laughs> being kind of a pill. Okay, so we started off with Three Keys by Kelly Yang. That was a book that actually some of them had already read. Oh, and I got these on audiobook and I just played the first chapter. So we listened to them and they took notes. The notes were from um, Write On With Miss G, so you could find those on her Teachers Pay Teachers store, and they just, you know, kind of took general notes about, like, do you like this style of book, or like these type of characters, or, or whatever. 
Um, okay, so what do we have next? We did Sky Watchers by Carrie Arcos. That was a favorite book this year. Let's see, on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? I forgot to write which book we did. Oh, I don't know why I did that, but okay. So that's how we started out. Okay, so then we got into the next week. I told them about our um, book presentations that they would be doing. So every Friday throughout the semester, kids sign up to do a little book presentation and just talk about a book that they read. I think I have, what is happening? <laughs> I think I have a template for that. And then I also try to get them to read 10 books each semester and I have just kind of a fun little way for them to keep track of those. They just make like a little bookshelf and do a really brief review, but basically it's more just a way to like track your own reading, just kind of really quickly let me know if you liked it or not, just so we can kind of like share that information. It's really fun for me to grade at the end and just see what kind of things kids are reading. It's not a full book report. It's not a full anything, you know, but for me, it works really well. I like it. Okay. My husband has chosen a lovely time to start like sleep training the baby. <laughs> She's all the way across the house, but we can still hear it. Okay. <laughs> Moving on then. Um, let's see. Okay. The first like real unit that we got into was a media literacy unit. I just felt like this was incredibly important to do as there was so much information out there about COVID and about vaccines and about elections and all of this stuff that it's important to know how to like receive and consume and suss through that information. So, um, we used Nearpod at the beginning. If you've got a, a Nearpod subscription, they have like a whole unit that you can use. So we started off with that. They also have a video about fake news. And so we used that as well. Um, so there's information on sourcing your information. Oh yeah. I had them, um, look at some of the emails that I received to like my business email account, like for too cool for middle school. Cause I get, tons of emails every day and you know some of them are a little suspect <laughs> like you know brands that want to work with you or whatever so I had them look at those and help me decide like which ones were legit and it's also important like when you are putting information out there too like if you are emailing somebody to do what you can to look credible if you are credible right <laughs> like you want to know how to not look scammy so that was that was just kind of fun okay the next week we set up these news lit accounts that's the common sense media thing and so we also went through that whole like curriculum unit that was really really good i have another video that i made about a year ago um where i go through all all these different websites and they're all free and how you can use them in your classroom so i will link that down below as well okay info zones is part of that um like common sense media i think is it common sense media it's connected to something else it has like another name that it goes by <laughs> it's been a while it's been like a year so i'll just link it for you because i forget okay so this we did like some in class some they would finish at home sometimes it would be kind of more of like a flipped classroom thing where they would like go through the little module at home and then we would talk about it the next day so, oh, Checkology. Yeah, Checkology, that's what it's called. Oh, we also do um, vocabulary through flowcabulary. So every Monday I would assign them a vocabulary lesson on flowcabulary. So it was the seventh grade units. And then like we'd go over the words and stuff on Mondays. And then by Friday, they had to have completed the quiz and stuff. And so I would give them grades for that on Friday. Oh yeah, whenever it uh, was the start of a new month, I would give them monthly reading recommendations. I will also link those down below. I think I'm gonna update them a little bit too. If you already have it, it'll just automatically update for you. Um, but I read a couple other good books this year that I, I might wanna switch out a few on those slides. So there's like a different theme for each month based on kind of like National Heritage Month type of things. Um, so that students, if they do take a book recommendation per month from those slides, then they get like a really well-rounded year of reading from a lot of different authors. They read about a lot of different types of characters. And so it's just kind of a cool little reading path. Oh, we also started our Navigating Digital Information Notebook. And that's something I do have on Teachers Pay Teachers as well. 
It's based on John Green's videos, also about navigating digital information. Like there's so much, <laughs> it's weird, there's so much good information about how to consume information. So we actually like, you know, used several different sources to learn about looking up different sources. <laughs> So that was kind of cool. Um, sometimes we did community circles. We did them a lot less this year because it just made me nervous, like having like a talking piece handing around to everybody. Like we didn't use the talking piece this year. It was just kind of, uh, I don't know. Every, everything felt risky and weird. So we didn't do that all that much. Let's see, still doing Checkology, kind of mixed with our navigating digital information notebook. Those were really, really good. John Green did a good job. I like him. And again, those were things that like, we would do a couple in class and I'd kind of like pause every time we came to an answer that they would type in in their notebook. And then after we had done a few, they would have that as like pre-homework, like watch this video tonight and then tomorrow we'll talk more about it. Um, oh, we did a September 11th lesson using a chapter from my book that was like going to be published soon. It's that red one right there. So that was like the hardest chapter to write in my book. <laughs> my editor made me redo it several times because it, it, it's tough, man, to write about like a historical event that you lived through and not, I don't know, make it weird. <laughs> it, it was hard, it was hard to, to write that. Um, let's see, okay, still doing our digital notebooks and evaluating sources. We also use iCivics, which is another excellent website. It's more for history, civics, obviously, great for that, um, but this Hazelwood versus Kohlmeyer case is about free speech, yes. <laughs> School newspaper, I think. And so that's just like a really fun interactive game that related to what we were doing. Okay, again, I was trying to get them to like turn in late work. We have a late work form. It's a Google form and they can let me know if they have completed work that I have already graded, otherwise I won't know that they did it. Let's see, oh, they were really interested in the lessons about Wikipedia and like whether or not that is a useful website. Okay, still doing Checkology, um, looking at lots of evidence, more Checkology. Some things I graded and some things I didn't. There are a lot of little modules in there, so I like let them know like this one will be graded. Some of them were just going through just to to know the information. Oh, <laughs> I put a little bit of misinformation in there, proof that I am BFFs with John Green. Look at little baby Jensen in there <laughs> who came with me to a book release party for Turtles All the Way Down a couple years ago. Oh, the Tokyo Treat Box, that was so funny. I should link that video. Um, that was an email I was about to delete, like, eh, this looks kind of spammy. And they were like, no, 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 that looks, that looks legit. Like, we found their Twitter, we found their Instagram, we found their website, they looked legit. And so they did give us a free Tokyo treat box and my students ate all the food. <laughs> so we're into like the end of September here and it looks like we're kind of starting to wrap up our like Czechology media literacy unit here. Oh, okay. And then the next thing we went into was also related, but just kind of like a new thing. So they got these read to lead accounts. I have a reel on my Instagram account um, showing you how to use these. I don't have that many reels, so you could scroll back and find it. Um, so we did this game and it's kind of like a interactive and like cooperative game called After the Storm. And that was really fun. They worked on that together. It's like a newsroom, there has been a storm and you have to like get information out to people that's accurate and get it out quickly. and. It's, it's really fun. I really like this website. And again, it's free. So um, yeah, all of these things are things that are like pre-done for you, stuff that you could use in your classroom starting at the beginning of the year really easily. Okay, so that was like a month and a half, a little bit more than that. So like all of September, a little bit of August, and now getting into October. I used, oh, I think it was the Stanford Shag, like, reading like a historian resource, I'm pretty sure, about the Dark Ages. Um, and so this was to like support their history content. I thought that would be kind of fun so that uh -huh. we could... Ooh, what what just spoke to me? Oh my gosh. <laughs> my computer, shut it. Ugh, sometimes when I say history, it thinks that I am saying its name. That was scary. Okay. Um, okay. So in the last unit, we did tons of reading informational text, right? Not 
as much writing, kind of like reflective writing, but not really constructing an essay. So for the next unit, um, we read more kind of informational text, but um, also they're like primary source documents from, from the Middle Ages. So started reading those. Okay, and then that got us into the next quarter. And so you'll see the theme of the slides changes with the next quarter just as kind of like a line of demarcation there. So we went to our, our fall themes. Oh, and that's when my book came out. That was exciting. October 12th, it looks like. Yeah, my book birthday. Very fun. Um, so let's see. Our, our question was, was the time period between 400 AD and 1400 AD a dark age for Europe? Was this a time of cultural decay and decline? I'm actually reading a book right now called The Bright Ages. That's like a reimagining of the dark ages. So in preparation to maybe do this unit again. I was just trying to increase my knowledge a little bit. Okay, we did some circles going into this second quarter. We started writing our paragraphs and all of this is kind of from uh, that Stanford Shag website. So I just used a lot of pre-made stuff. <laughs> like it was just, it's out there for free on the internet and I was just using it. Now, after that, I was like, okay, the the myths around like the Knights of the Round Table and Lancelot and uh, Merlin and all that stuff is, it's actually kind of fun. <laughs> I never learned about this stuff when I was in school, but I, when I was in grad school, I took a English class, even though I was a history, got my master's in history, but I'd take like electives in English. So I took this um, like medieval literature class. Kind of cool, kind of fun. So I found some, um, what do you call them? Uh, a podcast. I'll figure out what this was. I'll, I'll link it down below. Can't remember the name of it, but we listened to a bunch of podcasts about <laughs> like these, you know, medieval stories and myths. Um, so then we got like our listening in, doing some listening skills while we were still finishing up our um, essays. Oh yeah, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Myths and Legends, that's what it's called, Myths and Legends podcast. Some of them had transcripts to go with them and some of them didn't. And I didn't really know that going in, that was annoying. So I would only use the ones that do have transcripts because we wasted a lot of time like trying to find the transcripts for some of the episodes. It must've been something that they like started adding later. But if you do a podcast, you need to provide transcripts, especially if it's, well, no, just always. <laughs> There's always gonna be people who need the transcript. So that was annoying, but also fun when we could find the transcripts. And so, okay, we listened to a bunch of those and then students each, like they were in partners and they listened to them on their own. And then they created a one pager about what happens in their episode. And it's always wild, wild stuff. <laughs> oh, we also started watching, I let them see a couple episodes of Merlin on Netflix just to get like a sense of, you know, what we think things looked like and sounded like and stuff back then. <laughs> they really liked that show. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how accurate it is. I'm not really like an expert on me the medieval time, but oh, we tried to do, okay, download from Spotify, run it through Otter. That, that was just very annoying. <laughs> it was Halloween. Um, okay. So yeah, they were just kind of sketching out their one pager, still working on their one pagers, finishing their one pagers. And then um, they shared them aloud, like in order. So we got to hear like these wild myths, like from beginning to end and like each person's interpretation of them. That was fun. And those I put up on a bulletin board and they are still there. <laughs> Some of them are not really appropriate for seventh grade, but uh, I don't know that, that made it more exciting for them. Like they wanted to listen to it even more. It's just weird, it's just weird, weird magic. Sometimes a little a salty stuff, I don't know. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta relook at this unit for this year, I suppose. Okay, um, ooh, then we went into the textbook and we used the collections curriculum for seventh grade and there's a unit called um, per like perception and reality, I think. I don't know if I wrote it on there. 
Um, so we, we use this little like magic dinosaur video and you can like print it out and like if you film it, it looks like it's moving with you. So we did a lot of stuff with optical illusions and all of this is just from the textbook. Oh, except for the um, daylight savings structured academic controversy. That's something that I have in my Teachers Pay Teachers store because it had just been daylight savings. And so this is for their like speaking and listening skills and like making an argument and stuff. So this is really fun. Sorry, wrong number was one of the texts in there that we read. We, we worked on foreshadowing. Um, we did a little bit of a seven habits reboot day thing. Let's see some more stories, another place, another time, heartbeat. Yeah, just some more like looking into like the brain, like how the brain processes things. That was kind of fun. Was a Christmas Carol in that unit? I can't remember, but we're getting into December. So we looked at a Christmas Carol. I think maybe it was part of that unit for some weird reason. Um, and so we just, we looked at a Christmas Carol from not a, um, a holiday celebration lens at all, but just kind of like, what is the message here? Like, what does this say about like capitalism and classism and stuff like that? And they got really into it and read a lot of uh, reviews and like critiques of the story online. So that was, that was kind of fun. Oh yeah, there's this other version of A Christmas Carol. I think it's on like Hulu and it's super dark because it is like kind of, it's more like a horror story than anything else. So I just showed them the trailer of that. And I think there were even parts of the trailer I had to cut out. Okay, it looks like we're kind of getting close to the end of that perception and reality thing. Oh, we did an escape room for A Christmas Carol. I think it was from like Danielle Knight's Teachers Pay Teachers store. It was very good. It was a really exciting one. Although there was, though there was one thing, like where, you know, like one link and that website was blocked by our district. So stuff like that's so annoying when you like find a really cool thing and then like part of it is blocked for no reason. And I didn't realize that till we did it. And then, cause like it's work, it works on my end, but it doesn't work from their accounts. So annoying, but overall, very cool. I just had to like give them the answer to that piece of it. They were writing um, a two chunk paragraph. I can't remember what it was on. Oh, I think, oh, I think they could choose um, any of the text that we had done in that unit and respond to a prompt using any of those uh, texts. So that was good. So they're doing some writing. They're doing some peer editing. <laughs> I was asking them for baby girl names, literary baby girl names. <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, and then we came back in January, and again we've got a new version of the slides just to show like we have we have transitioned into something. I don't know what's going on with my bun today. It's it's got a mind of its own. Okay. Oh, so going into the next semester, it was so weird. They switched like most of my students, but not all of my students. So I had mostly new students, but still some of the old ones. It was really, really weird. I don't know why they did that. I, I'm going to uh, fight hard against that. Like either give me all new students <laughs> or no new students. <laughs> like why, why would, I don't know. So anyway, it was hard to get started right away with something new when I had so many new students who had never met me before. Um, but we jumped right into um, fantasy literature circles and I couldn't start them before the semester ended and like allow them to do some of their reading over the break because I had all new students. So it just like really messed everything up. But I wanted to do them before I went out on maternity leave. So we spent the month of January doing fantasy lit circles and I have a couple of videos all about those and how we run them. I had only done them virtually and now we were doing them in person, however, everyone in the seventh grade class kept getting COVID or COVID exposure. So like half the class would be at home. <laughs> so it was good that it was still kind of like set up for virtual because even from home, kids could like add to the slides and like communicate via the slides about what they were reading. So it still kind of worked. I don't know. It was, it was a little bit weird. I did everything I could do on my end, but people kept getting sick and they gave me all new students. So it was like, what do you want me to do here? Um, okay, so they're like making a reading plan. They've got time to read. And then, oh gosh, I had to have, you know, another seating chart for contact tracing. For some reason I had really small seventh grade classes. And so like my 
sixth grade classes are, they were usually like 36, 37 kids. And then my seventh grade classes, for some reason, were like 25. I don't know. They were way smaller. So we did things kind of differently, seventh and sixth grade. Um, okay, so they're like reading. They would like present little by little on what they had worked on. They would kind of like work in class one day with their group and put together their slides for like one topic, like for example, about the main character and why they are unqualified for their task. And then the next day they would present on that topic. Oh, I did my January book recommendations. We had like a catch up day. Oh, when I teach um, a lesson for Dr. King's birthday, I can just use my own book, my, my purple one. It's really nice to have that now. I also have curriculum for that content now that you can also get on my Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, yeah, so the rest of this is just our fantasy lit circles, which I have more videos on. Um, oh, and then we also have a whole day where they like look on social media to see like what people say about the book, um, like on TikTok, Tumblr, YouTube, Instagram, Wattpad. Sometimes people write like um, fan fiction based on different fantasy books, especially. So yeah, this was this was pretty cool. We talked a little about fan fiction. <laughs> that was kind of fun. Um, and then we just scroll up through the end of January and that was it. They did little flip grids about their book. I think I gave them like a menu of different options, different questions that they could answer, or like prompts they could respond to about their book. And they chose like three and made a flip grid video about their book. And then that was it. I just had to like grade them all in class on that last day. And then I was gone. I was out. <laughs> I had a baby, we were done. So yeah, that was it for me. I wrote sub plans for my substitute to go into a new unit from the textbook. I think I wrote lesson plans for two um, textbook units. And so I don't know how, how far that got her. Um, and then they did like some state testing prep. Um, and I don't really know what else. By the end of the year, I don't know. They, I, wasn't really interacting at all. I helped a little bit kind of before the baby was here, just those couple, it was like a week and a half before I had the baby. Um, but yeah, so that, that was my year. I believe I'm teaching seventh grade English again this year. So I'll be able to, uh, you know, make a little bit more content about that probably than I did last year when I was pregnant and tired and yeah. <laughs> so again, I'll link as much as I can down below if you have any other just like suggestions, ideas, books, things that work especially well for seventh grade English, let us know down below and feel free to check out. I, I literally have like 550 other videos on this channel about different lessons and um, content and <laughs> units and stuff. So there's plenty here if you need any explanations. It's probably, there's probably already a whole really long video about it. So thank you again so much for being here and for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.